it's Sonia from Junk Monkey Paint Company. How is everybody out there doing? Happy Monday. Yes, I am back in the ground in pencil on the ground in Pennsylvania and back here in my studio. So it's time to kick off a whole new week. I am happy to be back in my studio. You guys you have no idea how hard it was. How hard it was. Um, like I was here up to the night before. Hey Barb, how are ya? I was here up until the night before I left to travel to Newfoundland and it was so hard to leave. It was like I knew it, I wasn't gonna see this place for at least like a week and a half or so-ish. And of course with the hurricane down south, we decided to cut our trip a little bit earlier because we were driving north to Canada and uh, we weren't sure if like, you know, the rain rings, all that sort of stuff. Which by the way, um, I did hear that Hurricane Florence makes her way. Well, not no longer a hurricane, but the remnants of her make her way here to our area today. And a little bit later today, I think it's supposed to get a little bit nasty. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we got here back in place before we hit any of that stuff, right? Because it's not fun to be driving in the rain. Anybody else just hate driving in the rain? Hey, Kim. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Amy. Beverly, how are ya? But it was so hard, guys, the night that I left to go um, back home to turn off my light here at my studio to lock up and to leave. Um, because you guys know, like, this is this is where I live, right? This is what we do. We hang out and we do all kinds of fun stuff together and we paint. Rochelle, how are you? Hey, Andrea. Thank you, Tracy, for the welcome back home. So anyway, it's nice to be back in the studio today. I've already got my hands back into my paint and uh, I'll show you what I was working on today. Actually, I created a video for you guys. It'll be up on our Facebook page in a, in a, a little bit. But I love pretty things, right? Like anybody else love to have just like pretty things around them, right? It makes me happy to come into my studio every single day and I love color and I, you know, if you're following me on here, love me some shabby distress, right? So this morning I was playing with Don't Make Me Blush, which is a really pretty vintage pink color, distressing, and I flipped, I flipped, I flipped because I love it so much. I flipped a an old, um, just, you can even see the tag is still on here for $2.99, right? So just giving you guys some ideas and so I could totally see this being used like you can find these all in different sizes put them next to like maybe on your vanity and put your soaps like get a small one do the same sort of thing with something small put your soaps on it that sort of thing for me I'll definitely use it as just a little thing for my desk just to make my uh, make my view a whole lot more beautiful and uh, you know what I'm saying. So that's what I was working on today. Watch for that when it comes out. Thank you, Beverly. Thank you very, very much. So I gotta tell you, um, the day that I left, the last person I saw was my sister, and uh, she told me, hey, I like that shirt, so I just like took my shirt off and gave her my shirt. Had a whole other one, okay? I happen to have luggage with me. But I uh, left her with my shirt, and she's actually getting ready to move, and she reached into her all of her, like, you know, um, her boxes, because she's getting ready, or she's having yard sales, getting ready to move, and she's like, do you like these? Do you want these? So it was kind of like a this for that sort of thing. I'm like, yeah, I'll take that. Absolutely. That's worth my shirt off my back because my sister liked it and I got it here in the U.S. So these are actually some, um, they're corbel style, right? They're hard plastic style. Hey, Annie. Nice to see you. Hey, Adriana, Susan. So these are like a hard plastic. Have you guys ever seen these before? And um, I mean, she probably just picked them up at like a dollar store or something like that. But they're made to be like, they look kind of like old concrete ones, right? Anybody else love corbels? I love corbels. And uh, even though they're fake, you can totally, through the power of paint, make them look like, you know, just heavier, antiqued, expensive, ornate. You know what I'm saying? So that's my plan to do with these guys right here. So that's my project today. Because I have, um, you know, back at my house, I have uh, French doors in my dining room. And I'm thinking, how cool would it be? to put like, and of course you guys know how these work, right? You put your um, curtain rod through here on both ends and then you have something really, really cool. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna work with these today and make them really cool and you can do the same technique on furniture so hopefully you're gonna get inspired today. Now I did notice that I got a chip right here and it probably happened because these were my trunk coming back from Canada. So uh, yeah, oh, nothing to declare Mr. Uh, Mr. US Customs, just a set of corbels from my sister. That's totally something somebody brings across the border, right? Yeah. So anyway, but I don't care. I'll show you even how I patch this together because I'm going to make them look really old and ornate. You love them? Yes, I do too. I do too. But I'm going to make them like, I don't want them to be like this ivory plastic kind of thing. You know what I'm saying yet? So uh, yeah, we're working on those, Susan. Now that I'm back in the country, girl, I will hook you up. I will hook you up. Yay. All right, let's do it. I say we do it. And I say we give away some junk monkey paint banana bucks. So for anybody who shares this video today, I will holler out a name. 
at the very end. Actually, Matt's watching in another room uh, on another computer, so he's gonna pick a lovely winner today. So everybody say, hello, Matt. Make sure you let him know if you shared. And then if your name is, if he gives me your name at the end of this video, then I will holler it out, and uh, you have until midnight tonight, Eastern Standard Time, um, to send me winner, winner, subject line at junkmonkeypaint at gmail.com so you can go ahead and collect the $20 that you can use online and hopefully maybe get yourself uh, a product that you've always wanted to try or some color or it's just something to have some fun with, all right? So here is where we are. So here is the deal. So yes, it has a crack right here. I probably did that on its way because there was a lot of miles and uh, boats between here and Newfoundland, which who loved all the videos that we did up there? Um, now you guys probably understand why I am like, I'm a mermaid inside, right? I just, I just, yeah, I'm a mermaid who now moved inland and that's why I love it when it rains because it's the closest I can get to the ocean when I'm living here in Pennsylvania, right? So by the way, make sure you're following uh, my vlog on YouTube because while we were up home, we also did some filming with Matt in the kitchen. Yes, you guys know that my husband, Matt, my partner in crime, he is a um, chef by trade. And so uh, we did a filming of one of the things he makes really, really well, which is is uh, roast beef sandwiches. Oh my gosh, so make sure you're not missing out on all good stuff over there, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do, okay? So what would you do? You have a hole in here, it's plastic, and you're like, what the heck can I do? True story, here's what we do. We got some painter's tape. We're gonna put the painter's tape right over that little hole right there because I'm antiquing these. I'm making them heavy and I'm making them look um, like they've been around ages anyhow. And can I tell you, you probably won't even be able to tell where the hole was when I'm done. I just wanna make sure my tape is down good and I'm gonna press it in really, really well so it like really sucks in and becomes the shape of the piece again, okay? There you go. And remember, I'm gonna use my Junk Monkey uh, Chalky Style Paint today and because it sticks to anything under the sun, pretty much everything under the sun, I can go ahead and this corner, you won't even know it was there. True story. What do you think of that? All right. I am not above painting tape and putting it on my piece because I'm a girl on a budget. I love to reuse fine stuff that otherwise would have been thrown out and uh, to make them beautiful again. All right. So the first color I'm going to use is my black velvet because I think that if you're a shabby painter, you love the antique style, getting a uh, black and a brown for your uh, stash of your um, paints is going to be important because everything that's antiqued, things age over time, right? And you see that, that maybe they take on some like dirt in the crevices and they start like think about paper that fades around the edges anybody ever do that when you were younger where you take like you try to like to take without burning the house down you put um either you soak your your paper in tea bags to create like that brown antiquing edge or you took a little bit like of a lighter or something to give your edge that pa that paper parchment torn old look you know what i'm saying so in your mind i want you to think about yes we're going to use um black for the antiquing. So grab my shabby chip brush. I know they look like they've seen years of use. It's because they have. It's because they have. And when you guys message me and say, Sonia, do you use them over and over again? You better believe it, girl. You better believe it. And you can see like as they start to get even kind of like harder on the top, I keep those because there is a plant, there is a place for all these brushes to be used. And so there you go. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my shabby chip brush into my black velvet paint. You can get everything I use over at junkmonkeypaint.com. And now what I'm gonna do is make sure I really get, let's see, guys, I mean, seriously, you know that blue tape? You know that blue tape? Um, yeah, what blue tape? What blue tape? So, like, you know, don't get your panties on a knot if you find something out there that might have a chip on it. Listen, you're, if you're striving for old look, tattered, torn, been around the block kind of look, don't you think that a chip or a dent or a ding helps you get to your vision, right? So I embrace it when I see pieces that, um, you know, this, or the furniture that has dents and dings. Hello, that's just, that's just life. That's real life that's happened to the furniture. And you're trying to uh, take it even a step further, right? So embrace that. I'm just going to stick my brush inside as well. And I know that this is where the... Um, what do you call it? Where the the coat, not the coat hanger, what am I saying? Help me, curtain rod. I think I still got like some travel brain because, you know, back in Newfoundland, the time difference up there is an hour and a half forward. An hour and a half, yes, Newfoundland has its own time zone. And um, so I'm still like, I feel like I'm still, I feel like the time of the day feels weird. Anybody ever do that? Like when you travel and you just feel like, 
they're still a little bit off, right? So we got home in the early morning hours of yesterday, early Sunday morning. Yesterday, just kind of like kicked around, watched some Netflix, started to unpack my bags. I haven't even got that all done yet. You know what? How to eat the elephant one bite at a time. And uh, so anyway, we're getting to it, right? We're getting to it. So today, it's so nice to be back at my studio here. Now I'm adding all the darkness, okay? So I'm gonna put this in my space, and uh, I like color at my house, so I'm somebody who's probably gonna bring in some color with this, and I'll show you what I do, show you what I do. Let's see, yeah, even if you weren't, yeah. Yes, yeah, I have to get my sea legs, right? Oh my goodness, there is, that, that is truth. Like, you do get sea legs. And it's funny, when you come off those uh, big fairies, that even though they're as big as they are, I mean, they can hit some turbulent weather as well when you're out in the middle of the North Atlantic. And um, I kid you not, like it took me probably two days because I took two ferries. And by the time I got, you know, from my vehicle to my, my place where we live, I could look at the wall and it looked like the wallpaper was moving. <laughs> I'm like, Matt, does it look like the wallpaper is moving to you? Like, I kid you not, I would look at the wall and my eyes still felt like we were moving, right? Because when you're on a boat, you kind of sway back and forth, you know? Anybody on here never been on a boat before? I'm curious. Never been on a boat before. Or we all been on boats here at this point. All right, let me get the, the dark over here. Which, this is kind of cool as it is, right? So what's nice is even though this is like this hard resin plastic sort of feel. Listen, and you could just go ahead, listen Linda, you could just go ahead and grab your Junk Monkey paint and paint right over that and, and then you're done, right? And already they look beefier. I will tell you that anytime that you use black, um, you're definitely, it's gonna definitely feel more beefier as is, right? Because black is one of those colors that just makes things look, um, like it fills up a space. So if you ever have a room where you have you have inherited a house that has a beautiful big room and you're like, I mean, I don't have enough furniture to fill it all out yet, start incorporating some um, heavy blacks into it, whether it's through your decor or your furniture, you know, that sort of thing, and you will feel your space fill up, I kid you not. All right, let's go ahead and dry this real quick. You have? Yes. You know what one thing I never had got to do, Susan, that I really wanted to do? And I didn't find out to the very end, like literally the last morning that I was there. Okay. On my like to-do bucket list is I want to ride a Sea-Doo. Who on here has ridden a Sea-Doo? Um, and so I've always wanted to ride on the water on a Sea-Doo and just have some fun with that, right? So as I'm leaving and uh, my brother and my sister-in-law take me to their, their cabin and I get to see them, you know, up home when you're in that far in rural Newfoundland. Everybody has cabins to get away to, that sort of thing. So grew up going to the cabin and uh, he tells me, my brother, that because it's right on a pond, that he has a sea do and I'm like, I'm leaving for the boat. And I kid you not, like two hours and you're telling me you have a sea do but it would have been way too um, too hard to get it out and to do anything with it, right? I have so fun, but I really hurt my tailbone falling off. Did you really? Oh, are you talking about being on a sea doo Really? I guess water can be like a smack to you if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, right? That's a little crazy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, right? waves coming over. I kid you not, I was on the, on the ferry um, one time and um, like the day, we took the day crossing going to Newfoundland, but when we came from Newfoundland, we took the, um, the, the nighttime crossing, which is very weird. Like being out in the middle of the ocean and uh, you can't see anything, right? So if you're out in like a miserable storm, um, you know, it could get pretty rough out there. You can't see anything. You are at the mercy of the ship captain, the ship, and the waves, right? But the garbage cans, I remember one time the, the doors of the, um, the stalls would like, you know, slam back and forth. You couldn't walk up right. Oh, not good. That's probably why I was like, let's make sure we get going because I don't want to be on that boat in the middle of the Atlantic when, um, if we're getting any rings of Hurricane Florence or what's left of her, you know what I'm saying? Not fun. Talk about tossing your cookies. Not good. I'm making sure this is pretty well dry. All right, 
there we go there we go people all right here we are right now pretty cool right so now here's where I get to have some fun you guys know that I love to do dry brushing and so I, I mean right now I just got the black velvet on to it you can see a little bit of the um, the plastic coming through I don't care what it's made of I'm just gonna paint it anyhow all right but I pretty much just wanted to get a coverage down of the black the create like switch it from that light color to the dark color because that's how things antique right dust gets down in the crevices and so for you when you're painting furniture use this as an example that you can lay down some black first like maybe if you have like an ornate dresser that has some beautiful deep beautiful detailing on it just take your uh, black velvet put over that area and then get ready to do the next step so we can pick any color we want I mean seriously to go over the top of this we could do gray and it would be very gray would actually be very beautiful because um, black and gray you know especially with this style would make it feel very grand but I'm a color lover I am a boho shabby lover so you know what I'm gonna put me some uh, Bahama Jade on here so I'm gonna grab another one of my shabby chip brushes that has been around the black block and back again and this color is just beautiful it's just you know reminds me of green ocean right like you know gorgeous so I am going to add some color on top of this and create some layering all right but I'm gonna dry brush and what that means is I'm gonna load my brush I'm gonna pull it off the sides like this and less is more and now I'm gonna go ahead and I want a little bit of that light like um, ivory color that's the plastic showing through guys like seriously can you even tell where that tape was like how gorgeous is that right how cool is that Oh, yeah, not fun when everybody gets sick. Not fun. Yeah, when I got on that one ferry, if you were following my vlog, and uh, I showed you we are on what's called the CAT, which takes you from Portland, Maine, over to um, Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, that they had brown paper bags. I kid you not. Like, that was one of the first things I saw, and I'm like, very nice of them, but now I'm really worried because I've never been on this CAT ferry before. We usually do the drive through New Brunswick, but this time we decided to take a second ferry to help us get there quicker, and uh, yeah, so, but the ferry was good that day. If you saw on Instagram, I posted just the beautiful views over there as well. Guys, look how nice that looks already. Like, look at that. That is that is uh, black velvet and Bahama Jade, okay? Gorgeous. So that's why I say, if you have something that you want to make feel just, you know, these are, in fact, I saw over here, my sister, I saw the tag. It's okay. She gifted them to me, but she paid $6. So they don't have to be real corbels, okay? They can be plastic. But as long as it's got the shape that you like, I mean, honestly, I could use this um, even like as not just to hang my curtains on, but I was even thinking that if I really wanted to, let me show you one quick second, I'll show you. Let me just get this back down over here. So I was even thinking as I'm doing this that, you know, I'm going to use them for like corner pieces for my curtain rods to go through on each side of my French doors but um, honestly you know how I showed you that trick with the tape just put some tape over it and uh, blend it all in because the paint will stick the tape that if I really want it to I could put a piece of tape over here do the same thing with the sides and then I could put these in the corner way of um, you know to make a really nice make those corbels right do you know what I'm saying so so easy just make sure you get a little bit of the paint inside because you want it so if anybody can like looks in through the side it looks like you brought that look in there just a little bit love my shabby chip brush and this is why I feel you don't have to pay a ton of money to get beautiful antique looks I really don't think you do all right so now we're gonna go ahead and do the other one. Oh my gosh so so fun so to make your piece look more distressed I will tell you here's a tip the more colors you use the more um, old they will look because it'll begin to imitate how over time um, you know and things get weathered and it exposes all the elements that make it up right or if you know grandma painted that kitchen window a million and one times and now it's sitting by the side of the road you're gonna see all the colors just start to peel back in the weather elements right so you can replicate that by putting on more colors um, to create more and more of a funky look, right? Look how beautiful that is, guys. Who's going to try this? Who will try this? Uh, even just looking at these two colors and going, I think I'm going to do my next dresser this style, right? Because you can do the same sort of thing with a dresser, anything. I just happen to be making use of these to do this technique, but it's not going to change. I mean, you can do this on a jewelry box. You know a big piece of furniture whatever you want and if you have a plain piece of furniture that doesn't have like a whole lot of 
ornateness to it. I don't know if that's a word. We're going to pretend it is. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's not like, it, it's just, it doesn't feel like all that fancy because it's got straight lines and it doesn't have all this like gorgeous voluptuousness to it right here, all the curvatures. You can go and you can find the wooden pieces that you can get like at Lowe's or Hobby Lobby or places like that. And all you do is you glue them on and then you paint right over it just like you just did the very same thing here, okay? So I love that. And because I went very light with that um, dry brush look, I will tell you that they're pretty much dry. I'm just gonna hit them real quick. So I can leave them there. But remember how I told you that if I go in and I take it even further, like the more colors I put on, the more old and funky they're gonna look. So I have in that very same space, a uh, big mirror that I got at Pier 1 and I did not pay full price. Let me just tell you that. I am the person that looks through all the things over on the sides and goes, ooh, red tag. All right, ooh, that's a little dent right there. No big deal, I can put a little bit of paint right there. So, you know, mirrors that would cost like $200. I think I got it for like $35 or $40 at Pier 1 and it's a big giant one, okay? And it has this metallic uh, edging to it. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So I like this to put in this space, but I think I'm also gonna put a little bit of shimmer on this, a little bit of sparkle on this, so that way it'll tie in as well with, um, with that mirror, okay? So you guys, here's what I'm gonna do for this. I'm gonna pull out my Metallic Accents by Rust-Oleum. So this color right here is champagne, and you guys know I always tell you that when in doubt, if you don't know if you're gonna go silver or gold, go champagne. Champagne is like, you can trick it into believing that it's silver, or you pair it with gold, and now it believes it's gold, okay? Champagne is a happy medium for somebody who's just not quite sure. Got it? Okay, there's a good tip for you guys. So um, I have a couple jars of this. I got this at Lowe's, and uh, one of you, lovely viewers actually found some and sent me um, Sherry sent me a whole jar of this last year and I'm still using it I love it love it love it love it and now I'm gonna go ahead and grab another brush so I'm looking for one that's gonna play with me that's a little bit you know I've still got some like you know can got movement and stuff that's gonna work with me and now guys I am going to put on a little bit of sparkle on this all right a little Bit up, bling bling. What you do is you share this video, and by sharing the Junk Monkey Love, at the very end, we're gonna announce a winner, and uh, somebody's gonna get a code, and we announce the code right here on this live. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and one last question. Can you see where that tape is on here? Like, does it really make a hill of beans? I don't think so. I don't think so. Hey, Jeanette, how are ya? All right, now let's go ahead. Oh, man. I'm gonna tell you, do a dresser like this, bees knees. Can you guys see this gorgeousness that's happening? The reason why it's happening is we took the time to put that black velvet down at the very beginning, okay? The black velvet at the very beginning, and now I've got like, I don't know, this could be like Indiana Jones, you know what I'm saying? This could be something from the temple of Indiana Jones. All right, I just love it. Indiana Jones, don't judge me, it's a true story. Yes, I love Indiana Jones. All right, guys, look at that. Do you see that? And you can put as much as you want, but the thing is, my goal is to just pretty much um, make sure I can still see the black and still see the Bahama Jade. This is gorgeous. Can you imagine a dresser with this? Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. All right, let's go ahead and do the sides. So I'm purposely using uh, my shabby chip brush. You can get them at junkmonkeypaint.com, see all the colors. You can do your corbels any color you want. If you're somebody out there who's living with rowdy frowny corbels right now, I just want you to know, you can have some pretty bling bling, amazing, heavy, expensive looking ones, okay? Or do this technique, I don't know, do this technique with your bread box if you want to, okay? You can have some pretty special things around your home without paying a fortune for them. All right, now let me do the top, just because we want the top to match up, right? Notice I haven't reloaded my brush. I'm just using what I got. You can do some like pouncing on that too if you want. Guys, is that not gorgeous? So yeah, you can take it. You can take it even a step further, right? All right, let's go ahead and do this one down here. So what do you think? Do you guys like the bling bling? Do you like the bling bling on it? A little bit of sparkle, a little bit of shimmer, a little bit of grandeur, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just like dusting it, I'm just dusting it with the color to be able to make that pop. Just dragging, dancing my brush all over it. 
guys, we're getting close to announcing a winner as I clue up my project here. So if you haven't had a chance to share, I would love it if you would. Sharing is caring. Thank you for helping um, share and inspire somebody else out there who, you know, maybe you um, you just want to save money and you want to have a beautiful home. You know, you're decorating for fall and you want it to feel cozy. Please don't feel like you have to go and spend a ton of money to buy new furniture when, you know, if you've got some vision and you've got some good paints, you can go ahead and just have at it, right? Love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. So I'm taking my time doing this because I don't want to completely, um, completely just cover all the colors, right? Guys, you can make your, I mean, seriously, if you have doors inside your house and you want to like, and you love this style and uh, you want to make your doors just feel heavy, right? Do the same, same um, technique with it. And then, you know, you can have some beautiful, beautiful like, doors that might be just made of pine or plastic, but it's paint that gives the illusion that um, these are much more heavier. Hey, Matt. Ooh, you got a name for me? Yoo-hoo! Thank you so much. What do you think, babe? Do you like it? Yeah. You like mm -hmm. those? Yes. Nice. Good answer. Good answer. What do you guys think, huh? Yeah? <laughs> what else am I going to say? <laughs> Thank you, Matt. <laughs> All right, guys. So there you go. So hopefully uh, this has inspired you. Oh, let me get that little side right there. But you don't want to cover it too much, right? So like I say, less is more. Just do, just do your multiple colors. And then we are done. So how gorgeous. How gorgeous. Now my sister's going to want these back. So when she catches up to this video, she's going to be like, um, yeah, I'm going to need those back now. I was going to yard sale them and it was broken, which, yeah, can you tell which one was the broken one? Uh, probably not, right? Because it's not going to make, like I say, any difference because once they're up in place, they're just gorgeous and beautiful. And that is the bee's knees, right? There you go. All right. So we have got a winner today. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I am so happy to be back in the studio DIY and just having fun. Um, so thank you so much. And so you'll join, you can join me here Monday through Friday on my page where I DIY and I do it live and you guys can hang out and hopefully get lots of inspiration. So the winner, the winner is, yes, yeah, she does want them back. Yeah, I betcha. Uh, but she ain't getting them back. Uh, she's just going to have to come visit me to get them. Come visit me to get them. You heard what I said. All right, so the winner today is Kimberly Higgins. Kimberly, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y, Higgins, H-A-G-I-N-S. Yay, if you are here, make sure you um, make sure you let me know. But all you have to do is email me at junkmonkeypaint at gmail.com. And I am going to do a second giveaway. So remember I showed you in the beginning that... Um, that this was a project that I was working on this morning, getting back into the swing of things, and I decided to do something for me, for my my uh, DIY shop office here. And so I filmed a video, it'll be on my page right now as we speak, um, it's uploading, and when you guys see this uploaded, if you would take a moment to share, it's gonna be a time-lapse video showing you how to flip just an old picture frame that you're over with. So Anna, my sister, hello, if you've got any picture frames in those boxes that was good for the yard sale, you can totally do some fun stuff with it. But if if somebody over there would take the time to uh, share that video, share the love, I'm going to go in tonight, later tonight, and I'll tag you and uh, just pick somebody who, under that video, uh, type share and share the video. Okay, cool. And by the way, this is Don't Make Me Blush. Don't make me blush, baby. Oh, so fun. It is so good to be back in the studio. All right, guys. I'll see you again tomorrow. By the way, guess what? Over in the vlog, I got my uh, latest and greatest Ipsy bag. It was on my counter when I got home. My neighbor had gotten the mail. And so I'll be opening up that later, um, and that'll be the vlog as well this week. So lots of extra behind-the-scenes stuff over there. Make sure you go to YouTube and search Junk Monkey Paint Company. You'll see my smiling face. Hit subscribe, and let's stay in touch. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great evening. Go paint something, please. You'll thank yourself later. Bye.